Hello, Blake Grudis here with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com, and today I want to go over text with you. Last week I did a clipping masks and mask tutorial, and I had a question from someone asking me how I got my original text layer to begin with, and then I realized that I really haven't shown much with text layers. and. Uh, you know, I use text layers a lot, especially when I'm doing uh, advertisements, ebook covers, and it's a very important quality to your photography uh, and your logo design for that matter. If you are a photographer and you're trying to create a business, then you definitely want to have a good logo. And part of that comes with understanding text in Photoshop, which is it's, it's kind of a difficult concept to understand. Uh, so I'm going to try and demonstrate it for you uh, really quickly here without going too far into it because this could be a two hour long tutorial based on how much there is to go over with text. So the first thing I'm going to do when I create any photograph uh, for a logo is I go to file and then new and then I usually make the new image something like 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 if you know what you you are going to be using it for going into it and you know that you have maybe a 20 by 20 poster by all means do 20 by 20 start at the highest possible ability 10 by 10 is usually pretty good because you can still blow it up to about 15 without any uh, problems so i usually stick to around 10 by 10 if i don't know exactly what i'm going to be putting it onto and if you start larger it's always easier to, to make it smaller, but if you have it small, it's a lot harder to blow it up. And I'm going to show you that here in a second with this text stuff. So one of the things that comes along with doing logos is using guides. And guides are really awesome in Photoshop. They, they save you a lot of time as far as um, how to line things up. So to make a guide, you want to make sure that your rulers are uh, toggled on your photograph and to do that you can simply press command or control R on any one of your open documents and that will create um, see the rulers up at the top and on the left hand side which is the size of the document I said 10 by 10 and I've got a 10 inch ruler at the top and a 10 inch ruler on the left you can click into these rulers and you can make it pixels um, so if I knew that this was a certain pixel size document if I wanted to go by pixels instead of inches I could do that and uh, you can also go by percentages too, percentage of the image size. So this is zero all the way to 100%. I haven't really seen too much of a, uh, a need for that, so I usually just work in inches. Now, guides are found within the ruler. If you click and hold in that ruler and then drag down, it will make a line that's a, called a guide. Now, I usually have that snap to the middle. So I know that this is a 10 by 10, so the middle is obviously 5, but it, it will connect right to that middle point. If I drag it back and forth ever so slowly, you'll see how it magnetizes to where the middle is. So if I was working with like a 13.85 document, uh, instead of having to do the math in my head and figure out where that was, that guide would automatically snap to the middle. So that's the first part with working with text. Always get that uh, middle range going so you know where the center of your logo is going to be. So now to toggle to the text uh, the, the text tool, all you have to do is press the letter T, and that will automatically change your tool to the text tool. So if you look up here, a couple things. Um, this tells you uh, what type of text you're using. I'm um, using Franklin Gothic for this. It's at nine point sharp. You can have it set to the middle or set to the left-hand side. For what I'm going to show you, this is not going to matter. Um, that's not going to matter at all. And then right here is the color that you're using. Now I'm going to leave that white so I can show you something. Um, but uh, just know that you can either beforehand click on that and change the color. I'm going to leave it white for the time being. So I'm simply going to type Blake, B-L-A-K-E. Now it's all white. I can't see it because it's white on white. Now you don't have to try and find that text and highlight it and change the color like you would with something like Word or uh, other uh, word processing documents, you can just click on that text layer and go up to that color and then change it to black or red or whatever it may be. So now it's very small and some people would think, oh, well, it's only a nine point font. Let me go ahead and delete that and retype it so that I can make that font larger. Now, if you just click on this layer and then go to something like 60 point font, you can make it larger that way. Or what you can do is you can press control T or command T and that will give you the transform item around it the, the little toggle around it if you press and hold shift and work in the corner that will enlarge that text for you now when I press enter notice that the point is now 99.74 we were at 60 now we're at 99.74 
So what it does is text is, there's a difference between a text layer and a regular photo. A text layer is called a vector based layer, whereas a photo is a raster based layer. So raster deals with pixels. Vector mainly deals with mathematical points. So text is always going to be vector based. Um, so there's some limitations to what you can do with that, especially in something like Photoshop, because Photoshop is typically designed for raster based things like photographs, whereas Illustrator is more for um, your vector based stuff. However, when you're working with text and fonts and all that stuff, that stuff pretty much has to be uh, vector based for this reason. Now, if I were to, um, let me duplicate this and I'm going to rasterize this. I'm going to show you the difference between a rasterized and a vector based. So if I zoom in really close, you can see that they both look very similar. Now, if I were to grab both of these and enlarge them, so it'll make them very large. Blake, you're screaming, uh, and then zoom in. What you see on the edges here, see the edge of this A and the edge of this A? The edge of this A is nice and crisp and clean. And why? Because that text layer, if we go to that text layer and look at the top, that changed from 100 point font to 300 point font, essentially 296.54. So I just increased that by three times its size. Now, if we look at this uh, rasterized image, which uh, is now pixel based, you'll see that the edges are very blurry. Now, that's why uh, when you blow up an image, it gets blurry, whether it's a photograph or even uh, an image of a rasterized text. Um, it, it gets blurry on the edges because it's pixel based and not point based. When it's point based, it's all mathematical. It's like angles and you can always enlarge an angle without having to get this blur. If we look at that A and then this A up here, this is our vector based A and this is our raster A. So that's something to think about. It's very similar to smart objects. Smart objects are the same way. A smart object is a vector based object in Photoshop. That's a whole nother tutorial to get into. But if you, if you knew anything about that stuff, then um, just know that photographs that are smart objects are, are now vector based rather than raster based. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this Blake copy. And I'm going to make this smaller just by pressing Control T and then making it smaller. But I want it to line up in the middle. The cool thing about having guides here is that it, it will snap my, uh, my name right to the middle just like that. Press OK. All right. So um, some people ask me, well, why when you type uh, your logo for Blake Rudis photo, uh, why don't you just press enter and then type Rudis and then enter and then type photo. I like to do them on three separate layers because I have complete control over them. If you see here, um, if we go into over here uh, on this palette, I have the actual um, character based palette for the fonts. If you look at right here, this A with a little line and then the arrow pointing up and down, it's saying that it's on auto. It's auto basing that space based off of the fact that this is 170 point font. So for 170 point font, when you add a paragraph, it's going to make it that size. So we can change that by going to something like 60 or something like 72, but it never quite gets them right underneath each other. So instead of dealing with all that and trying to deal with the hassle of uh, working around paragraph spaces, I simply just delete this part. I don't even want it. What I want to do is just make a new layer that says Rudis. Now, instead of um, just typing Rudis here, because if I do that, the font is very small. And if I wanted to match that up to the Blake, then what I would have to do is look at what size the Blake was and then change this point to 170. There's an easier way to do it. I just deleted that layer. I'm going to press Control J for duplicate, and then I'm going to press the V for the move move tool, and just move that other Blake down. So now I've got two Blakes here. Not a big deal. I can just press T for text, delete this, and then type Rudis, and it sticks to the font that I was using before. So here's another reason why I use guides. So now if I what I did to get off of that text layer is just clicked on any layer in the layers palette, and that kind of cleared that. Um, the fact that I was in the text based um, tool. So now if I go over to my guides, I can move a guide over to the edge of, uh, let's say we'll do it to the edge of Blake. So if you if you have a guide open and you're working with text, you always want to move it, move the guide onto the layer um, that uh, you, you want everything to be lined up with. Now you're not actually moving the guide onto the layer because a guide is 
kind of a layer in and of itself. It's a hidden layer that's on top of everything. If you want to get rid of your guides and not delete them, you can press Command or Control H and that will make them disappear. And Command or Control H will make them reappear. So now I'm gonna move the guide over to the other side of Blake and I want it to snap right to the edge of that. So in order to make that guide snap right to the edge of Blake, I have to make it, um, I have to be selected on that layer. If I were to be selected on Rudis and try to move that guide and have it snap to Blake, it's not, it's gonna to snap to Rudis. So that's kind of frustrating, but it does help. Just make sure you're on the right layer and have it snap to it. The reason why I'm using these guides to kind of sandwich all this in is because I want Rudis to be the same length as the word Blake. So I can press Control T and then just move it over. And now the Blake and the Rudis are the same size. And they're very close together, kind of making a very punchy uh, um, logo here. So again, I'm just going to press Command or Control J to duplicate Blake and move it below. And then go with the word photo. Now we'll see that photo is much bigger than the rest of it. So I can press Command or Control T. And that will get me to the transform and just move it over so it snaps within there. So now we have Blake Rudis photo. It's all very well done uh, as far as the, the spacing and the sizing. If I want to clear the guide so I can see it so it fits in this nice little box that I have here, I can just press Command or Control H. So the other thing with text is that text works just like any other uh, photo layer that you're working with in Photoshop, you can double click on the, on the right hand side of this layer and it will bring you into the layer styles option. And you can bevel and emboss that font, which I highly suggest you do because it looks pretty cool, um, especially if you're using this as your logo. Um, you can also do a drop shadow if you wanted to um, and put that drop shadow right behind it. Again, the opacity is really high on this one, so I'm going to just drop that opacity a little bit. So now I've got a layer style on there. If I don't want to have to remember all those settings, I don't have to. I can just right click on Rudis, and because I knew that was a layer style, I can just copy layer style. Now I can click on Blake and press Command or Control and click on Photo, and then right click and say Paste Layer Style. So now all of those have the exact same layer style as uh, the original Rudis layer style that I had done. So that's the basics with text. The main thing to remember here is that text is raster based, or vector based, I should say, sorry, and photos are uh, raster based. So in order to turn this into, let's say like an editable photo layer, what I would need to do is highlight all of them and then maybe right click and then go to, you can rasterize type and that will raster these so that these are now more like photos rather than text because you will have some limitations with these being that they're vector based. But know that the minute you rasterize them and try to blow them up, it's gonna look horrible. It's going to have that blurred edge to them. So keep your, your text in the vector based as long as you can before you have to turn it into an image. Now let's say, one last thing, I want to turn this into something that I could put onto the web. I wanted to save it for the web and then have it so that this white wasn't the background. So that maybe I was putting this onto a website that already had a photo for the background. What I would do is I would just double click the background layer and then delete it. And then I would crop this to make make it the exact size that I want it to be. And if I go to File, uh, Save As, and then go to PNG, then this would be saved as a PNG with a transparent background. So let me just label it Untitled 1. With the PNG options, I usually do smallest uh, slow so that it, it, the compression um, is is well done and then under Elon Delay it's just none. It's really just the default options in Photoshop when you press OK. This will now be a PNG uh, document. So when you save it as a PNG you can move it onto the web and it will go right onto the photo that you're uh, that you want it to be on. So what, what I'll do here is I'll just open up a photo so that you can see um, kind of how this would look. So here's a pretty cool photo. I'm just going to open that up move it onto the background here and then down. So because uh, this right now you're not seeing it as a save PNG, it's what I was working on, but this is what it would look like if you put it on top of a photo with it saved as a PNG. You can also make these one layer by uh, clicking and holding the Rudis and holding shift and clicking down through Blake and then right click and go to um, merge layers or press control or command or control E and that'll do the same thing. That's basically going to be your new PNG. 
So again, I'm Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com and HDRInsider.com, and this was just a basic tutorial on how to use text. Um, if you like these tutorials on HDR Insider, I do full workflow tutorials of my um, HDR workflow and other things for that matter too. I give away free actions uh, every month and a bunch of other things. It is a subscription-based website. It's uh, twenty dollars a month or a dollar or twenty dollars twenty dollars a year. Pardon me, or a dollar ninety-nine a month uh, for the the full-length tutorials instead of these fifteen-minute short ones I do for YouTube here. Have a great weekend and happy holidays.